David, obviously a big team effort, but I dare say you're going to be the hero in that dressing room. And are the big saves, are they always sweeter when the team then goes on and wins the game? Well, I think every, everyone, like you said, is a hero here because um, we work together. Uh, it's not just me, just saving the ball. It's, it's Leo scoring and then Thomas is scoring as well. But, yeah, of course, uh, it's a, it's a, cru cru a, cru a crucial moment of the game. Now we are nil nil, um, and I thought we controlled very very well the the game. But obviously they had their chances, and I was there to to be able to save uh, save uh, all his header. You certainly were. So talk us through it. Eight nine minutes after half time, the ball kind of loops over your head. I mean you haven't seen it back yet, no, but from one know. angle on on super slow, it looks like you're absolutely dead really. <laughs> but you know. So but what are you thinking? No, it's a thing of what I remember. Uh, it's a shot from outside the box. I think it's a little deflection. It's, I think it's a deflection from Gavi. So I'm going. I think I'm I'm on the floor, kind of thing, or on my knee on the floor. So I try to get up. I see looping over my head, and I try to reach it. I can't reach it because it's too quick. But then I see the rebound going towards the the, the pitch again, and then I just see Oli just going in there. So I just try to react as quick as possible. And, and I, I just put my hand there, and luckily enough, it, it was nobody around, so uh, we cleared the ball, and yeah, of course, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fantastic save, yeah. And is, is that also years and years of, of hard work? We don't see everything you do in training, but often warming up for a game or the little, little bits of training we do see, you make a save and you're up again, up again with your goalkeeper coach and with your teammates. So is that save years in the making? Yeah, I think so. I think it's just a repetition of things, no? You... you Sometimes you make you do drills where you have to save one ball and then get up quick to to save the other, and and that's just like a repetition of of years doing it. And then obviously that at this time just has paid off. Sometimes it doesn't pay off, but this time it's it's sweet to to say that it has paid off on all this hard work. And, and I do think when we see you know videos of this season back in years to come, we'll see that save again and again. I asked you off camera, <laughs> have you made a better one? You said yes straight away. <laughs> nah, but yeah, no, I don't think so. I think it's a, this is a, a different one of course um, it's just a reaction one uh, and on top of my head I don't think this is one of my my best save uh, on top with um, with your hotters uh, at Brentford yeah. and some save last week as well you've started this season unbelievably well yeah that's what I'm there for uh, I'm trying to hold this, the team as much as possible to, to win games ok well you're player of the match thank you very much well done thank you well done thank you yeah well like I said I, we'd expect Arsenal to dominate possession of the game um, Villa had their chances but I think that Arsenal they weren't in too much problem. They didn't have too many problems because they normally get impressed. They normally get impressed all over the pitch, even though they should have conceded a goal um, from, from um, net being pressed. But in the end, I thought they played well. Trossard was the, bis for the was the big difference for me when he came on in the second half. He was making the runs that he wanted Martinelli to make, going the other way, going long, stretching them and getting crosses in. And in the end, you know, they won the game deservedly for me. You both called it, actually, and so did you, Tim, saying that you thought Trossard would come on and have an impact, and he did. I'm sure he's going to want to... Well, he always has. That's starting 11 soon. He's never let the Arsenal fans or the manager down. Whenever he's asked to come off the bench, he comes on with an attitude what you want as a manager. He rolls his sleeves up and he proves to the manager that he's deserved of a start, and I would be very, very surprised next week if he doesn't start. Would you? Because he scores goals and he assists goals. He's a good team man with a lot of quality. He knows how to play that position. He comes into them areas and them little pockets where it's hard to mark. Always threatens the goal. For me, he's a top, top draw player. I think um, you, you said what I, what I think he should start. I, I think that um, Mikel tries to choose the, the players for the, for the occasion. I think today he thought that with Villa's high line, maybe Martinelli might be the one to, break, to breach it. But what we saw, especially in the second half, that it came more down to, because we had such good possession, Tim, in the midfield, yeah. it came down to the movement and the timing of the runs. That's what they needed to break uh, Villa down today, and that's how we got the goals. And what we're seeing now is just what this victory means to these Arsenal players. They're not just remembering what happened last season against Villa, they're remembering how close they came to winning the title. They can't afford to drop points, and this was a big statement today, Tim. They, they all know, everyone associated to the football club, including the fans who are travelling there to watch them today. They know how difficult this fixture is, so, certainly um, early on in the season as well. And if you drop any points against that team like Man City, then it's hard to catch them up. So it's really important to win every game. And then when you play your head-to-heads against Manchester City, you need to beat them. It's as easy as that.
<laughs> as yeah. easy as that. Well, look, there's plenty to discuss about this match after the break, but before that, we're going to take you straight to the results from today and the fixtures we can look forward to tomorrow. So it all started at the Abex. Brighton beating Manchester United 2-1. Palace lost out at Selhurst Park to West Ham. It was Fulham that beat Leicester at home. Manchester City 4-1 against Ipswich, although Ipswich did go ahead in that game to the delight of their fans. But it was Erling Haaland, of course, that came back and scored a hat-trick. Just his 10th City hat-trick and his 23rd career hat-trick. Southampton lost out to Forest. That's two defeats in a row for Southampton. Tottenham with a huge win over Everton. 4-0 and then there's confirmation of Villa losing out 2-0 to the Gunners. Tomorrow we're on the south coast as Bournemouth face Newcastle. Wolves will host Enzo Moresca's Chelsea and Arna Slot takes charge of his first Premier League home game for Liverpool against Brentford. Now, what does all this mean for the Premier League table? It is early days, isn't it? But let's just have a look because the teams... On the bottom half, where well, you can see Manchester United, they're in that bottom half. They've had one win and one defeat. Aston Villa find themselves there as well. But if you look towards the bottom, there are a number of teams that are yet to register their first points of the campaign. And Everton have taken a massive blow to their goal difference, haven't they? With conceding seven goals across two fixtures. Let's have a look at the top half of the Premier League table. And Manchester City are there. They've done wonders for their goal difference. Brighton in second, Arsenal third, Tottenham completing that top four. We can't read too much into it, but I know those fans of the clubs in the top four will be delighted to see their teams. Welcome back to our Premier League fans around the world. We've just seen Arsenal beat Aston Villa by two goals to nil at Villa Park. Big victory, big statement for the Gunners. But it could have actually been a very different story, righty, because when you look back at Ollie Watkins and the chances he had, not just in the first half, a big one, and one in the second half, well, we could have been looking at a draw or a very different result. Yeah, we should have been. Arsenal would have been chasing this game had he taken those chances. It's the kind of chances where, like we say with Villa, not really closing down, but when they do see the opportunity, they get in. This is where he's got to show composure. Could have even had a touch. The goalkeeper is in no man's land. You can see the goalkeeper. He's already gone down to his left. He just needs to show composure here. Um, that's the kind of miss that you, you think about, Seema. Because even when the night before was a striker, you're thinking about chances. You're not thinking of them that easy. This is even easier. You know, when you look at that, um, there is, is, there's no excuse for this miss for me. You look at where, where the goalkeeper is, you've just, got to, you've just got to direct it over there to him. It's not difficult. The ball's not going at a fast pace where you have to control it. You've just got to head that softly to the goalkeeper's left. Look at the goalkeeper's now out of the game. He's out of the game now. Now, just to the left, he won't be able to get that spring. He's given, he's put it too close to the keeper. And, you know what I mean, in the end, it's probably cost his team, if we're going to be totally honest, well, in chances. It's interesting, because the first chance, we said this in the, in, when we were analysing it at half-time, felt like he rushed it. Did he rush it again in the second half? Is it bad decision-making? What, what that looked it like a rush, wasn't it? It's like he couldn't wait to get up to edit. It's like the goalkeeper, he didn't... Stay calm in the moment, Seema, because the goalkeeper's got to fall over. He's got to get back up, then he's got to react. All Ollie's got to do is direct the ball over there with his eyes. Like Tim, look at he's coming off the bar, not fast. He's coming towards. He can slow down and just head that over here to the left. Look at him. Look, he's just tried to get it on target, and that's yeah. not the time to do. I that. mean, he anticipates it brilliantly, but all good strikers would. But the two chances what he's had there today, nine times out of ten he scores them. Yeah. Today he he doesn't. Hence why we will not sleep until he scores again. Oh, I bet. And how will Unai Emery be feeling after that? Because he knows his team can go he, out there and It's it. so important to score the first game in the Premier League. You know, the team that scores the first goal normally doesn't lose the football match. I think it's a very high percentage. Now, especially at home, you get the fans behind you. Mm. I think you saw the confidence when Trossard scores that Arsenal really took the game away from Villa then because of the confidence. Everyone wants the ball, flooding forward... The defenders, you know, they're cheering block tackles, you know, goal-saving tackles. The, the, the whole momentum changed, you know, and this, they could have cut back here. They're in good position there. He's got to cut it back past five Villa players there, Saka. Mm. You know, Digny gets hold of him. Here, you see him when he gets close to him. There, he gets hold of him. Now, keep hold of him, in my opinion. Keep hold of him. You're not going to give a foul away there. <laughs> but he cuts this back. Look, how he cuts it and misses everyone out and... That is a wonderful finish because he comes on the blind side yeah. of the defenders and he just hits it back from where it's coming. Right. That is a cool finish. Yes, he has a lot of time to look at it, but he sorts his feet out. Look at his body position and his balance compared to Ollie Watkins. He's over that. Yes. He's leaning forward. You know what he's saying there? What have I got to do? I'm the man. I always affect it. 
what on earth have I got to do to start in this football? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what he's saying? Well, to be honest, you know, we're talking about somebody who's arguably our best finisher, most clinical finisher with, um, with the chances, and somebody that comes on and affects games. You know, yes, we know Gabriel Martinez has got a lot of pace and he's, when he's on form, he's very, very dangerous. But what we know with Leandro Trossard is his movement and appreciation for, for the rest of the team in what he does. You saw him come on and score a goal. You saw him come on and create a goal. Mm -hmm. You know, he's somebody that now, yeah, you probably have to look at him and think, yeah, what do I need to do to, to, to start? It's a lot of that now, right, in the Premier League. You know, players who are playing off the wide area are always the best finishers. So, you know, if yeah. Trossard, without doubt, is one of the best finishers they have there. You know, you see Jota at Liverpool. Yeah. Give him a chance, he scores. You know, I think they work here a lot more. You know, they don't take it for granted. Their chances are few and far between, but when they get them, they affect the game. He's a clinical finisher. This he boy. is, isn't he? As I mentioned as well, he scored against some big clubs last season to really help Arsenal yeah. make it so close, didn't they? They were so close last season. What about Thomas Partey's goal? Talk us through that one. Well, again, you know, you, you just have to look at his movement there. Not enough to, um, closing down from Villa, and he's, he's, he's made the run brilliantly, but then you look at Thomas Partey, far too much time and space here on the edge of the box. Look how long it's taken Saka to actually get it to him, and he's still got that much time and space. Yeah. You know, look at Trossard now. It's time, bam. That's what we wasn't getting in the first half. Yeah. We wasn't getting behind Villa. They're very poor in that situation. Not many teams are good in that situation. But look at the amount of time that Thomas Partey's in. Yeah. And so then he's bent that round the defender. You look at him here. Look at the defender. Number 14. Just bends it round yeah. him. Brilliant, brilliant goal. I think what you can't underestimate there is the quality from Saka. It looks from the outside. If you're sitting there looking at this at home, you think, well, it's an easy pass. But it's the appreciation of the pass. He brings Partey onto it. It gives him no control problems. All he says to him is a message on that. Bend it in the bottom corner. Mm -hmm. He just lends it into him. It's a fantastic pass. He passes the ball to his teammates how he would want to receive it. He takes care. Brilliant from Saka. To match day live. So it's goalless at Villa Park between Aston Villa and Arsenal. But, you know, there's actually quite a lot to talk about and pick our way through. So we're going to get straight to it. I think we've got to start with that Ollie <coughs> Watkins miss. It's so unlike him because he had so much time and space. But he'll be ruined that missed opportunity now. Absolutely. The best chance of the, of the, of the game, without doubt. They put a press on, which is very unlike him, because normally they just wait for Arsenal to make mistakes. Bailey goes in, very aggressive in the press. Morgan Rodgers has been outstanding. Just slides the ball into him. There's no excuse. Mm. There's, no, there's no bobble there, but Ollie's just got... You know, do you know what? I said before at the top of the show, when he's got the ball to his feet and he's got a half a chance and he hits things through legs and all that. When This is at, when he's at his worst righty, but he needs to be taken out. He's an international player. Yeah. That is a sitter. It is. Um, and, and again, what it comes down to with this kind of finish is your basics. You, you think, OK, I'm, I'm, the goalie's gone down, basics. I'm going to lean over it. I'm going to get good contact. I'm going to get that on target. No one has the, any right to score every single chance, but you, you, you have to. You have to hit that. You know something? When you watch it, can we see again? Yeah. When you watch it, he's leaning back, he's come off of his heel, and he's, like you say, Tim, he's, a, he's an international player. Yeah. Watch him, look, he's leaning back, look, he's come off his heel. You've got to see from the time that, Morgan, that Rogers is laying that across, your body's always got, already have got to yeah. be in a position where you're coming onto it straight on. He looked like he rushed it as well. Yeah. Like he it's all about, taken it. a ball. It's all he about preparation. Yeah. He, he recognises Rogers has, has won the ball. He knows the quality of Rogers. He knows he's going to get that. But he backs up, try and gives himself room, tries yes. to come away from it, but he gets caught up and he's almost a stumble as he's backing up. And then the right, he's absolutely right. He's, he's I mean, it's just no, there's no composure no there. There's no, no yeah. there's no balance in his finish where he should be on top, just slide. I mean, he should be putting that in the net. Worst case, the goalkeeper has to get yeah. across and make uh, it safe. Yeah. Mm. But you have to be hitting the target. Well, let's talk now about Arsenal. They seem to be having some joy on the flanks, but is it that final ball that's letting them down a bit? At right the moment, in? yeah. And I think that the link-up play on the left-hand side isn't as great as I thought it would be. But what you can see from Arsenal is when Villa do get it wrong in respect of their, 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 their press, these are the situations you find yourself in. This is a poor ball for me, outside of the foot to behind everybody. I think that you want to make sure that you keep that in play, lay it into somebody. Again, with this one, they've broken Villa again. And then you want, this ball's got to be with conviction. So on his weaker foot, right across that area. Yeah. And then you've got the, the, on the far post, look where he's going. Yeah. He's going in, he should be getting to the far post. And Kajavec should be knowing that he's going to play that right across the box. And then, and then you look at, again here, with, um, with Party, he does brilliantly. Yeah, but this, this, is, this, is, this is good play from, 
from Saka. And this is what we're talking about in respects of getting the ball in these areas, like here. But this, that's a world-class save. You know, that's what Saka is capable of doing. Him and Martin Erdegaard have got that little intricacy going on. And that could have been a goal out of nothing, but it was a world-class save. Now, Tim, earlier on you mentioned Morgan Rogers, a yeah. player that I know you're a fan of. He had a really good run, a good spell in this match. Yeah. Tell us why you like him so much. Well, I like him, first and foremost, not only because he cost £8 million, pounds, by the way, he could be £80 million pounds away he's playing, <laughs> but he gets in them little sneak areas and he drives with the ball. He doesn't break lines with his passing, he breaks lines with his dribbling ability. And as a midfield player, once that ball gets played in behind you, and if, you, if you're Declan Rice or you're Thomas Partey, and that ball's getting played in behind, and you've got someone who breaks like this and wants to dribble and go to the heart of your defence, he can only cause the opposition problems. He's got a lot of confidence. This boy will be a superstar. And I'll say it again, £8 million. Fantastic business. He's getting better and better. Top draw, that boy is. High praise there from Tim Sheldon. Very quickly, Uno Emery will be happy with the draw in the first half? I think he's quite content, yeah. yeah. I think one magnificent save, as Wrighty said, from the Saka shot, but the best chance of the game fell to Watkins. They're catching Arsenal on a counter-attack at the moment. So far, so good for Villa. OK, we'll play. No goals, perhaps not what we expected so far between Aston Villa and Arsenal, but Ollie Watkins and Villa will be ruining a big opportunity that came and went, Lee. And what's really interesting is how they actually created this chance from their press. Yeah, Tell us pretty, what happens here. It was pretty slow to start the game off, wasn't it? I think, you know, both sides were backing off. And then you could just hear where, see John McGinn, he's just tempting to go. And I think if you look now, there's not very op not many options in that back line for, for Arsenal. Something so triggers them. Yeah, and I think I think they've, they've seen, I mean, you can see Timber that's playing in a, a, a more of an inverted midfield role there, and which Jamie touched on uh, before the game. And then it's that press there where there's no other option, is it? Because Wally Watkins is, is occupying the other centre-half, and that's where the four go at some pace, and he should score. I mean, it's an absolute golden opportunity for Ollie Watkins. He gets it all wrong. And Do you think Timber's role, Jamie, is key in Aston Villa's well, triggering the press? Normally, in the conventional back four, your left-back's out there so that Gabriel can just pass it outside to him and he can play that ball forward. But because he's playing in that position, Gabriel finds himself in a real mess. Once he takes that touch inside, Bailey is all over him. It isn't a foul. Morgan Rodgers, who's been magnificent this full, in his first 45 minutes, just plays it to him. It's on the plate. But he just gets a wrong part of the surface on it he gets his ankle on it he does the right thing in trying to reverse it into that corner but it just hits his ankle bone which doesn't give you the right connection obviously he's just you can see it normally when you think about a player their balance is right their poise is just side foot it in he's a little bit off balance maybe a little bit of a lack of confidence in that moment first shot of the season first shot of the season last season you're backing him all day what a chance what a chance you're, to go one new up you're also backing Bukayo Saka when he gets in that position Cutting in from the right-hand side. Have we seen the value of Emi Martinez again for Aston Villa here, Lee? Yeah, absolutely excellent Martinez save. We'll see it here. But as soon as Saka gets that time and space, you know he wants to certainly be aggressive and, and drive into it, doesn't he? He just pops it off and he just have a look here. Once he gets here, I'm expecting this ball to be nestling in the bottom corner. And that is a sign of a, a world-class goalkeeper that Villa have at their peril. I mean, it's a really big save because, I mean, he utilises, I think, Pau Torres there. And it's going in the far corner. I mean, that is a massive big hand, isn't he, it, for Martinez? He certainly enjoyed it. Look at him. He loved that. <laughs> he uh, did. Uh, yeah. Save. He's letting the referee know. Never he definitely saved it. Show it was a great save. What are we seeing, though? We're seeing a, a very cagey game. But what Aston Villa, for the first 25 minutes, sat off Arsenal, made it very difficult. And that's almost made Arsenal even more passive. They need to play at more of a tempo, move the ball quicker, because while Aston Villa are sitting back, it hasn't suited them. I said before the game, maybe take a draw, Arsenal. But I'd look at it for the first 20 minutes, Arsenal were much the better side. They've got to improve. Martinelli hasn't been at it so far. I can see maybe a change in that area. Well, Lee told us he'd be absolutely delighted with the draw. <laughs> <Definitely>. <laughs>